we we seem to live in a world in which there's appears to be a lot of certainty about what everything is. All the things that we've grown accustomed to knowing what they are, the presumed objects and events of the world and the world itself. It often has the whiff of, of incompleteness, something lacking. That's one perspective, the perspective of separate phenomena. And yet, no matter what it is that we think we know what it is as a phenomena, if we enter into that phenomena in a sense, and explore its nature, we just never arrive at the final conclusion of like, oh, I finally arrived at what it is, you know? And yet, it's not possible to do that, really. And then that recognition that this is beyond comprehension, it's free of problems because it's free, ultimately, of any definition. There's not some greener grass on the other side, like, because this is always it. Whatever this is that's somehow being here and appearing as all of this, no matter how it looks, it remains that, because what else could it possibly be? Boundless, seamless, indivisible infinity of existence. Nick Hyam here from nisagayoga.com. Welcome to another episode of the Non-Duality Podcast. In this episode, Paul Dobson is joined again by John Astin. We kind of approach it like it's some sort of puzzle to be solved. What even is experience? It's appeared and I haven't signed up for it. I can't stop it. I can't start it. It's just here. And I don't know what it is. And I think that that fact is kind of something we have a problem with. It sort of brings this feeling of insecurity, unsafety. That's how the human mind kind of operates, isn't it? That's that kind of operational mode. You can't really escape that way of in, interpreting things. You can just sort of see through them at some point and realise that's not, not how things are. You, it's, not, it's not a puzzle to be solved. It's open. If it's a puzzle, it's an infinite puzzle. But actually, if I stick closely with just my own experience... I literally don't know what this is. The fact that it even is, that you can even have this experience, it, the amazingness of that. Like, <laughs> we seem to live in a world in which there's, uh, appear, you know, appears to be a lot of certainty about what everything is. You know, it's kind of like, you know, in a way you close your eyes and, you know, you, and then you open your eyes and you see whatever you see. And the... The formulation of what it all appears to be is kind of instantaneous, isn't it? It's, not, it's mm -hmm. not like you open your eyes and you have no comprehension of what you're looking at. I mean, you open your eyes and it's like there's a computer screen and all, all the things that we've grown accustomed to knowing what they are, you know, the, pres the presumed sort of objects and events of the world and the world itself, right? Mm. So, and it seems like it's almost, you know, just like a flash, like it's, it's just there. You know, that's one perspective, you know, the perspective of, of separate phenomena. And yet, it's showing up as this complete whole. It's quite paradoxical because we could say that there's two separate beings having a conversation. Mm. And yet, you can't find any separation anywhere. You, you look and you can't actually find a discrete, bounded thing called a subject or a self, and yet appearing as a self in a world, living in a world. <laughs> you know, it's beyond yeah. self, no self, world, no world. Yeah, no matter what it is that we think we know what it is as a phenomena, if we, <laughs> if we enter into that phenomena, in a sense, and explore its nature, we just never arrive at the final conclusion of like, oh, I finally arrived at what it is, you know, and now yeah. I know what it is. And yeah. here, it, here it is. I can, you know, I can put a limit around it. I can put a definition around it. And yet it's not possible to do that, really. There's some sense that we can, so that's hence all of our definitions, like, right? Yeah. So not being able to actually define it in any way and seeing that, you know, really seeing that, not just as an idea, but no, just knowing that you can't. That is almost quite, that's quieting the mind in a very natural kind of way. Like the definitions don't apply whatsoever. The stories don't apply whatsoever. Consciousness is constantly generating interpretations. But in the instant of an interpretation, 
the arising of this thing we call interpretation. What is that as a yeah. phenomena? Well, interpretations are not interpretations. Interpretations are the fathomless infinity of existence, like everything yeah. else. So <laughs> interpretations aren't worse or less enlightened than freedom from inter- so-called freedom from interpretation. They're the, mm. exactly the same thing, which is unknowable, pure unknowable mystery. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just so extraordinary. I mean, interpretation is just another apparent phenomena that can't actually like really go into what is a thought, you know, what is yeah. think, what is thinking that supposedly the great boogeyman of spirituality, you know, thinking is pure, bottomless, ungraspable radiance. Yeah, exactly. There's always an interpretation. You know, if you can't pin down what this is, then some people would say, well, it's just absolutely no thing. You know, it's nothing, right? On the one hand, the defining and the limiting feels defined and limited. It often has the whiff of, of incompleteness, something lacking, you know, a mm. vulnerable subject in a world of objects. And then that recognition that uh, this is beyond comprehension, that our, this is boundless, seamless, indivisible, indescribable the sense of that is one of it's light light it's free it's it's un, it's unlimited and unbounded and indestructible mm. and so that's a really different implication isn't it <laughs> oh definitely yeah and it's not like we're changing one story for another it's like literally just throwing all the stories out and just kind of seeing where that leaves us and actually that's actually a really nice place to be i find it's free of problems because it's free ultimately of any definition. There's not some greener grass on the other side. You know, there's not no. some better, like, because this is always it. Life, no matter how it looks, it remains that, because what else could it possibly be? But whatever this is, feeling the, what it is that's here, that we might be naming as X, Y, or Z, and we feel the presence of what, what's here, and it's indeterminate. Again, no matter whether what we're describing is pure joy or pure horror, it's actually still the same basic, unfathomable, you know, ungraspable reality. Mm. You talk about a paradox, it's like sadness, it's got a specificity that's distinct from something like joy, which again has a specific, like, let's just say flavor, you know, kind of quality to it. So they're, they're clearly distinct, recognizable as distinct flavors. Yes. Like go to what's specifically there, like definite, go to the definite, go there and you will come up with the indefinite. Just that's where mm. you find the indefinite. You don't find the indefinite by going into like some sort of thought or abstraction. You go no. to what's concretely present. Apparently like palpably here, concrete, yes. like, yes, it's here. I can feel it. It's here. They go to what's concrete and you won't find it. You know, I, sometimes I call it the mirage like nature of experience. It's like, you see it mm. there. It's absolutely there. Like there it is, you know, or you feel it. There it is. Very definite, yeah. undeniably present. And then you go to find it just like the mirage in the desert and yeah. there's not anything there that can be found. <clears throat> in a way you can't really say, is it there or is it not there? No. So it's, it's just like this fresh instant. Be with it as that fresh instant. And it's like, is it really a problem that you recognize as a familiar problem? Like, oh, there it is yeah. again. That damn state of mind, my uncertainty, my insecurity. It's yeah. like, no, no, no. This is something you've never encountered before. So without a reference point, it's like, now you're free falling in the unknown of it. We come up against paradox against paradox, you know, the mind kind of seeing through its own, seeing its own limitations and seeing its absolute impossibility at defining this uh, at, and the absolute open endedness of, of this and the infinity of this. It kind of brings the mind to a halt in a way. It just kind of it realizes something beyond itself, so to speak. You can still obviously all these things can appear They're Absolutely. You can use the mind as a functioning tool 
but also realizing you're not talking about anything actual. Your thoughts aren't talking about anything actual. And it kind of like everything just opens up. What, what is a mind? Like we're yeah. calling something the mind. I, I don't know. I don't know what the mind is. No, exactly. It, what is the mind? Is there a mind separate from awareness, separate from experience, separate from anything? Is there, is there anything called a mind that I can lift out and just say, oh, here's the mind. Here's my ego. You, you can't. It's all, it's all the same seamless. Yeah, I mean, it just becomes this... Um, I mean, we can still make these distinctions again between these different seeming phenomena. And, and it's like there's no, there's like there's no problem with any of that. Mm. But we can also, there can also be a seeing that it's like the mir mirage. It's like, it's there. So I'm not going to say it's not there, mm. but in another way, you can't find it. So it's there, yeah. but unfindable. And, and it's the same thing with our knowledge, you know? It's, it is a free fall, like you say, free falling into yourself. There's nothing to actually be afraid of. Yeah, you increasingly recognize, you know, the, 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 the never ending failure of, of trying to to put it into some sort of box of understanding, you know? And yet there's also a kind of beauty in trying to convey and use language and concepts to capture, to make this kind of bring it home in a sense to like human beings are aspiring to realize different things. You know, the spiritual seekers maybe might frame that in terms of like trying to find God and oneness or enlightenment or whatever clarity or openness and and you know maybe people are less defining what they're seeking putting it more in terms of just trying to find happiness and well-being and ease and comfort and yeah you know, it, it's uh, it turns out that 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 all those things that we're aspiring to realize are the very nature of reality itself all the time yes yeah. that's pretty good news you're always at home here like this is the <laughs> home that is the home of every moment you know, the fundamental yeah. basis of every moment is it, it has, we could say, you know, a feeling of being home because, um, but it's the home, it's the being home, the felt sense of being home. Even if you might describe it, like, I feel like I'm not at home, you know, that's also mm. being home. So, so yeah. it's bulletproof, you know, it doesn't depend on how it looks. It doesn't, mm. reality doesn't depend on how it looks. Yeah. That presence, the presence of what is can look like anything and it's still the presence of what is. And so this is a, it's a transcendental home, you know, it's a transcendental clarity and openness. And um, it's always the case. It always abides. And so um, this is just a seamless expanse of sky, sky mm. existence. Okay. And so anywhere we go in that, that vast boundless sky of existence experientially, we never depart from the sky and it can look like anything. It can look like this moment and then it looks like the next moment. And it's not, a, it's imagining it's other than itself somehow, you know, and then it goes on a journey to try to find itself. You are the, the, the fundamental kind of all inclusive harmonizing love of reality. And then we go on a search for love, you know, all, all this, it's just, but it's all quite innocent, you know, it's, it's yeah. all, it's all just, um, always home like this is always home like you're you don't have to go somewhere else you know we've just grown to imagine that that this is lacking something you know that we are lacking something that there's something incomplete and it's all quite innocent but wherever i go i'm in the same place in a sense i'm in the same yeah. inconceivability i'm in the mm -hmm. same absolute unfathomable bottomless mystery always so so in a way from that perspective it doesn't matter where i go in the field of experience in the field yeah. of life searching for x y or z i always end up i will have many different experiences but i'll always end up exactly the same place which is you know kind of no place so when you discover that this is actually just completely open-ended and indefinable then it's like again the implication of that is a kind of a freedom, a kind of a, a lightness, a kind of like, wow, you know, this is actually amazing. Like this, this open endedness is. is amazing and aw awesome and just stupefying and astonishing and beautiful. And um, 
So then it becomes this kind of, even when things are difficult, you can discover another mm. transcendental, like beautiful, inconceivable, open-ended nature of the very same difficulty. And it doesn't mean that the difficulty, you know, you might be having some health issue, you know, and it doesn't mm. just make it poof, go away at no. that level of the, 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 the apparent problem. You, see, you may still no. be navigating that. You have cancer or you have a stomach ache or whatever. Yeah. But it's like now you're seeing more of it. You know, you're seeing you're seeing not just the definition of it, but the beyond definition of it. And then 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 it's it, it changes the experience of it. You realize, you know, all is well is not a state. It's not a separate state to get ourselves into. All is well is the very nature of all states. We, re, we rediscover the, the childlike, you know, non-conceptual kind of nature of everything. Yeah. That, that view can be rediscovered. We don't lose the other view of knowledge. And now, now we have both. You literally can't. I mean, you can't. I mean, it's not just a philosophical idea. You, I mean, you've never seen this view, you know, look out my window. I've never seen this view in this particular shade of light with this particular mood uh in this particular you know as state of mind let's say um while chatting to you it, it's kind of like i can't and also the color the colors the way my eyes are functioning today and everything every just so but but not just that just an infinite amount of details that will never be exactly the same the wind will never be blowing the leaves in that kind of pattern again and everything else you know it, it just it will <laughs> but it's like oh of course i've seen it it's just the trees outside yeah and i've seen those you know millions of times oh and it, you do it to people you know oh it's just john we've met a few times now i kind of i feel like i know what john's about a little bit um i'll have you a chat with john it'll probably be the same same kind of chat as last time same sort of thing but really it's not it's not at all because it's it's to everything about it is totally different even though it's similar we're in the same rooms we were in last time it's... the actual experience doesn't have a reference point no that's it exactly it we're making reference, reference points out of thin air aren't we <laughs> making them i guess i guess it's whatever memory is seems yeah. to be involved in that those creation of reference points and knowledge right mm. so i know what things are because i have memory of what they were and now they're that seeming to repeat itself. The pattern is familiar enough based on, right? Some seem something I've seen before, right? I imagine. Something. Yes. I have a reference point for Paul because of memory. Yeah. Like it shows up as a kind of a narrative, like a story, yeah. like a, a, a history. Like we, you and I have a time kind of, there's like a timeline to the history of our knowing one another that's like spread out over time. We, we seem to live in this world that just takes for granted that there's a flow of time. And, and yet, in, in this actual moment of seeing, the particularities, the specifics of what's being seen right now, and I don't refer to any like past reference point, mm. then in a sense, it's like I'm in completely unknown territory. There's no knowledge because there's no yeah. reference point. So I don't know actually what I'm experiencing. You can't find something called past in experience, yeah. right? You can't no. find something called future. And what we call present can't be found either because it it's, has no duration, right? Because of its dynamic, you know, it's just, it's like poof up in, a, up in smoke in its very seeming appearance. It takes zero duration, right? It's, there's no time. The actuality of experience is always this timeless, pointless point you know just like like a, just a flash like so it's very peculiar you know it's like how and it's the same thing with space right because there's a sense of like an over there that's not here spatially mm. speaking right i look out over there it looks like it's over there <laughs> and i'm over here but the experience of over there you can't say where that's occurring it's occurring, there's no space. It's not, there's no... It's always occurring here, isn't it? It's always occurring here, which of course... When you go over there, it's here. <laughs> it's a... it's, it's non-dimensional in a sense. Yeah. So, and yet, at the same time, 
reality shows up as spatial and three and, and, and not non-dimensional it shows up kind of as dimensions. And yet, so again, it's very, well, which is it? Well, yeah. it's beyond any way of, it's beyond saying that it's timeless or a flow of time. And it's beyond saying that it's spaceless or spatial. It's just, it's, in, it, it's, it's somehow inclusive of all of it. So, you know, you can also understand how, like, the discovery of what we're talking about, this indeterminacy, this, you know, what the, what the Buddhists would call emptiness, mm. um, the unfathomable nature of this, the ungraspable nature of this, it really, in really, truly is freedom from suffering. Yeah, that is, well, that, yeah, that is the, real, the true freedom from suffering, isn't it? Not sort of some halfway house... Uh... Kind of, you you know. It's probably better to call it the freedom in suffering, you know, and that's discoverable, you know, by, I would suggest, by exploring what's actually here um, outside of what we imagine it is, you know. It's like pure, ungraspable, transcendentally beautiful, sparkling, radiant, shining forth of the mystery. Whatever this is that's shining forth, that somehow being here and appearing as all of this, 